Welcome to the latest edition of This Week in Campbell Football, live inside the Campbell TV studio right here on campus. This show is presented by Wilkinson, Chevrolet, Cadillac, Buick, and GMC. Alongside the head coach, Mike Minner, I'm Evan Budrovich. On this episode, we explain the magic number of 10, how it helped Campbell football defeat Presbyterian. Is there a quarterback controversy brewing between Wiley Hartley and Hodge Malik Williams after his record-setting performance with six touchdowns? And what's the key for a bye week? How does a team get ready for Big South Conference play? We explain that all on This Week in Campbell Football. On Saturday, the number 10 was fantastic. Breaking a 10-game losing streak, scoring 10 touchdowns. Mike, on defense, a program record 10 turnovers. Mm -hmm. What was the key to slowing down the highest scoring offense in FCS football? Well, <clears throat> it's kind of like what we talked about going into the game, Evan, was guys got to run and tackle, you know, and, and be in your spot when the ball comes to make a play. And that's what happened. We got great pressure up front from our four guys and caused the quarterback to put the ball in spots that we was ready for. And um, great job of catching the ball, because that's the most important thing when you're trying to get turnovers as far as interceptions is concerned. And then great job by the defensive line of getting to the quarterback and stripping the football to create that. And then Levi, when the guy did catch it, he was able to strip the ball out of there. And so just aggressive play by the defense all night. Eight different players combined for those 10 turnovers. That's the Levi Wiggins pick to get things started. How about C.J. Tillman, his first career pick six? Well, C.J. is a heck of a football player. And we we so blessed to have him. He was a three-star recruit coming out of high school and, and actually was committed to Liberty. And, um, you know, at the last second changed his mind and called us. And we like, yeah, we're going to take you. And so that was really, really good for us to get him. Turnover props are showing up all over the country, Mike, from axes to turnover chains. Your team went with a turnover cape with money draped all over it. What's the significance of that prop? Oh, you know what? You're going to have to talk to the players about that, Evan. I just really think at the end of the day it's about having fun. And any time that you get a um, turnover, you want to celebrate that. And so guys are now celebrating with the money cape and, you know, looking like a old-time wrestler, you know, maybe Ric Flair-ish. You know, that's what we were looking for. They love it, and that's all that matters. Mike, you're an old-school player in a new-school college football world. How do you embrace the social media trends of these turnover capes when players come to you with those ideas? Uh, what, whatever helps these guys play good, I'm with. Okay, so if, if a money cape make you play good because you want to get the cape in the game, I'm all for it. So um, I, I really never care about what they want to do as long as it's going to help them play better. Entering this matchup with Presbyterian, we talked about the depth of your secondary, minus two starting safeties, Dorian Jones and Darian Slate. In this matchup, Joe Johnson at the cornerback position, a fumble recovery and an interception. Your backup safety and prayer leader on the team, Greg Streeter, with an interception in the fourth quarter. What does that performance say about the depth of your team? Well, it says that um, our coaches has been really, really developing guys and at the same time also recruiting great guys, right? So that's what, that's what happens when you're in your fourth cycle of getting scholarship football players. You start to build the depth um, in your football team. You get your starters right and then now it's the depth. And, you, you know, when you look at it, you, you don't think about um, guys being third team, fourth team, second team, first team. It's all about being prepared and ready to play when your number is called. That defense slowed down Presbyterian, holding the Blue Host to three yards per play. This team scored 75 points a game entering this contest. How did your defense stop Presbyterian? Well, again, I think it's, um, you know, Coach, let me say this. Coach Glosser did a great job of preparing his guys to do the things that he needed to do um, as far as, you know, getting the defensive game plan together. I think the assistant coaches did a great job of, of getting their guys and their positions ready to play. And the defense just played free, right? They, they, they weren't concerned about all the trickery. It's just, we're going to do our job, and we're going to do it really, really good for 60 minutes. Not 30, not 40, but 60. And they was able to do that for the first time this season. 
Boy, Mike, 10 was the magic number for your football team on Saturday. 10 turnovers forced, 10 touchdowns, and you in college were number 10 at Nebraska. How special was the magic number 10 for your team? I guess it was very special um, when you look at the situation of what we was doing on the football field. And now I got to go study what is 10 and, and why did it show up so many times with us in that game. And, and um, I guess it is a very special number. I wore it. We did it three times in the game. And um, we, we're excited about the number 10. Maybe I could just go get it framed up and just put 10 back in my office. What do you think? As the game goes on, do you keep track of the number of turnovers? Clearly your team's winning. How do you manage that number of turnovers as the game goes on? Yeah, you don't. I mean, it just happens. And, and you're just doing your job. You're just ready for the next series and the next play. And you're not concerned about what you have done throughout the game. You're just ready for the next um, possession the next play and and I think that's the mindset that that great football players got to have after your defense recovered that opening turnover here comes sophomore quarterback Wiley Hartley first career start and all he does is break program records six passing touchdowns 342 yards through the year what impressed you most about Wiley's ability to step in and play first of all he's a freshman okay and we're going to redshirt him this year so he'll be a freshman again next year that's what's so great about the fact that we got wiley harley on our football team he's amazing man he's, he's a great quarterback he, he has the mindset he has the calmness he has the ability to get back to center really really fast and he can lead a football team and he can win this is what a quarterback is supposed to do and that's what he brings to the table um, and I think Coach Morris has done a great job of having everybody prepared to play. Our, our second quarterback comes in and he breaks records. Um, that's what we expected from him because he's trained that way and uh, we're lucky to have him on our football team. Wiley Hartley's first career pass, touchdown at Appalachian State. <laughs> first career start, he hits Julian Hill for that touchdown. Six total in the game, only in three quarters. Such an impressive start. What about Wiley Hartley gave you the confidence to put him in this football game? Well, it's just all about the simple fact that um, he's shown this since he's been on campus. He's a guy that understands the process. He goes through the process and trains himself um, for every situation that we have. And so when you look at that type of stuff, you, you can't help but be excited about number 11 being on your football team. And, um, you know, we recruited him hard, and, and um, we was lucky that um, he, he, he was playing for a team that didn't have the recognition as far as high school is concerned, and um, we got lucky to get him. Cordell Stewart, Stewart, who used to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers, actually was his quarterback coach in high school, and so uh, he's been trained by the best of the best. So you have two Atlanta area quarterbacks, Wiley Hartley and Haj Malik Williams. Mm -hmm. Give me a sense, Mike, is there any chance that Wiley Hartley could start against North Alabama? Well, I mean, it all depends on if um, Hodge is healthy or not, and, and um, that's really what it depends on. You don't lose your job because you got hurt. Um, that's just my philosophy in football, and, and so here, if, if um, you know, Hodge is able to be 100% um, with, with his injury, then he'll start. If, um, if not, um, then we, we got 11, and, and, and he'll start, and, and he'll do a great job and, and make it happen. And then we got, you know, um, Dylan right behind him, ready to go too. So we got three great quarterbacks on our roster that, um, you know, we, we okay with anybody of those three playing for our football team. This week is a bye week. You get ready for conference play next Saturday. What's the most important thing you're working on with this football team during the bye week? Mindset, right? How do you get better when you don't have a game to show you your results of that week? And that's what we gotta teach. That's what we gotta be about. We gotta be obsessed with doing great. We gotta be obsessed with getting better. Um, it just can't be a deal where I just show up because it's practice a day and let me just get through it because I'm thinking about the weekend that I have off. No, you gotta dominate every single play in every single day and that's a mindset that you have to develop and that's what we have as a football team. Um, we know where we at now. Our, f our floor right now is that we 72 point win team to Presbyterian. That's where we at 
And so we got to get better this week so we can be a better football team at the end of this week. This team gets ready to face North Alabama. That's a conference game this year. The Big South announced it's officially a Big South conference game. What is the value of starting conference play following a bye? Well, to me, it, it gives you a reset and you get some rest and you get your people back. So we, we down a lot of starters on defense. Josh Johnson didn't, um, didn't, didn't play. Um, when you look at Slade, he didn't play. Dorian Jones. So a lot of guys on defense was out. Um, Haj Malik Williams, our starting quarterback, was out. And so now we get all these guys back. And um, that's really what the bye gives you, an opportunity to rest your guys and get guys that's injured back. And then the other thing is is give you an extra week to look at the opponent um, next week, which is North Alabama. And so we get a chance to watch them on TV live against their opponent this week and um, get ready for them um, next week. So all those things give you a great feeling of, um, you know, being able to go through a bye week and getting ready for conference because now they all count. I mean, it's like the NFL preseason games, and I call these first three games preseason games because they really don't count, and you got to go win a conference. Well, you got seven of them in a row. Go win these seven games, and you'll be in the playoffs. It's really that simple. That first opponent, North Alabama, mm -hmm. they lost by just three to Jacksonville State. Mm -hmm. That same team who beat Florida State in the closing seconds, clearly a challenge for head coach Mike Minner. He's going to take the week to prep. We're going to get you back next week with the preview of North Alabama as we get you set for Big South Conference play on This Week in Campbell Football. Hi, I'm Coach Mike Mentor, head football coach at Campbell University. If you're looking for a new car, go check out my friends at Wilkerson, Chevrolet, Cadillac, Buick, and GMC in Sanford. Go where I go, Wilkerson in Sanford. Proud supporters of Campbell Athletics.